Hi, my name's Alyssa. Uh, I'm the biologist for the summer. Uh, I'm here at this nest today because one egg hatched and then the other egg seems to not be viable. So I'm gonna do an egg collection. So what we do, uh, the reason we collect these eggs, we usually freeze them and then we can dissect them to look at the development of the embryo or we can send it out uh, to test for mercury and other contaminants. So it's really important to get these eggs and uh, see how they're doing and the productivity of the loons. So we also have the eggshells from the hatch chicken here, uh, which uh, from if you watch the other loon cam, James, our other biologist, collected the eggshells. And we kind of collect those for the same reason. We can uh, test them for other contaminants. And we can also measure the thickness of the shells and see uh, how the thickness changes throughout the years. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and collect this egg inside this raft. Let's see. It's pretty deep in this raft. Okay, here's the egg. I don't know if you can see it. Do you want me to hold it? All right, so we have the egg. Uh, we usually, we label it and then we bring it back to the center and we can kind of choose what kind of testing we want to do. Do you have any um, cracks on it? Like, any, anything unusual the way it looks right now? Um... No, there's no cracks on it. Uh, the egg isn't warm anymore. Usually when you touch an egg that's viable, you'll feel some uh, like residual body heat from the loons. Um, but this egg has been abandoned since Friday afternoon, I believe. So uh, usually after 24 hours that the loons don't come back to incubate, the egg is considered not viable anymore. And in this case, we had the camera to tell that it, it was 24 hours that went by, but usually if we suspect that the loons aren't turning the egg, we'll come and we'll mark the egg with an X in pencil. And then we'll come back 24 hours later and we can tell if the X is turned. And if it's turned, then it means that the parents are rotating the egg and that the egg is still viable. So in this case, we didn't mark it, but we could tell that the loons were incubating it. So it's um, it's still not viable. And there's nothing unusual with the egg. Um, the reason it was abandoned, it could there could be a lot of reasons that it was abandoned, but I'm guessing since the first one hatched, uh, they were pretty satisfied with that, so they didn't really feel the need to come back and keep incubating this other egg. So they kind of just they just let it fail at that point. Um, but there are also other reasons. Maybe, uh, maybe the adults knew that the egg wasn't viable, so they chose to stop incubating. Um, it's not predated on or anything. It doesn't seem like any other loons came and kicked them off the nest, so it kind of just seems like they were satisfied with their one chick, and that's what happened. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and grab these eggshells from the first hatch and put them in a separate baggie. Let's see if we can. The hardest part, getting the eggshells from from the raft. So there, there's not too many eggshells left in there from the hatch. Um, there was this big chunk that I collected, but the rest are really tiny. And um, sometimes the parents also, when there's another egg, they'll carry out uh, like the extra shells from the first hatch just to clean the nest out. So that may have happened in this case. 
Um, and then the same with this one, we'll throw a label in there. And then we can come back and test it if we ever want to see any contaminants or the thickness or anything like that. And yeah, that's the eggshell collection process. And then now uh, this nest is pretty much done for the year because they had their one hatch and uh, they're not going to lay again this season and there's nothing left in the nest now. You want to take a few questions? Yeah, should we? Okay, well the first one is, how deep does a loon dive? Ah, so I learned this recently. A loon can dive up to 250 feet under the water. Okay, and how, how long do they stay there? That's a good question. Um, you know, I'm not sure. They, they definitely... So usually if boats approach them, they'll dive once, maybe for a short amount of time, but then if um, like a disturbance stays around, They'll dive a second time for a super long time so they can go um, a much longer distance. So I want to say up to eight to ten minutes, but it could be longer than that. Uh, what do loons do at night? Do they just sleep on the water or do they crawl up on land? No, so loons, they really don't go on land unless they're nesting. Um, and even when they nest, they only go right on the shoreline because their legs aren't really made for walking. So at night, they kind of do what they do during the day. Um, sometimes you'll see them sleeping during the day too on the water. They kind of just lay there with their heads tucked in. Um, so at night, they do the same thing. And a lot of times you'll hear them calling at night. So a lot of uh, like loon on loon conflict happens at night. So they're still moving around and interacting with each other. And they're still very much awake at night. Does the parent dive for food with the baby on her back or wait for the mate to come back? So, uh, at least in the first weeks when the chick is really small, it's too buoyant to dive, so it really can't stay underwater. So one parent will stay with the chick on its back and then the other one will go out and search for food and bring it back to the chick. Um, how, wh why, why don't they have loons in the south? Uh, good question. So they have, uh, the oceans have loons in the south, but in the summer is when they migrate north to all the lakes, and um, it's just a matter of their geographic distribution. Uh, their breeding range is really just uh, like southern Canada and the northern United States, so that's why you're not finding them on lakes in the summer in the south, at least for the common loon, that is. Um. So I think that's all the questions we have right now unless one comes in. Um, okay. You want to describe like what's your what's your typical day like? Yeah, so so I'm a biologist as I said. So so I have a I have a pretty big lake, but my job is a little different because I'm not on a kayak, I'm on this big boat. So my day consists of going to uh, I basically pick like regions that I go to and I'll um, I'll survey multiple territories within that region of the lake for the day. So I go out and I, there are some regions where I'm just looking to see if there are loons present at their territory. And there are some regions or some territories that I'm checking uh, for active nests, for failed nests, for chicks. Um, so basically each day I'm just tallying how many loons I'm seeing, where I'm seeing them, and trying to keep track of the population. Another question came in about why are they here at this brooding area and not their uh, normal brooding area. Where is their normal brooding area? Um, it's around the corner. It's out around the corner? Yeah. So their brooding area isn't a super specific area and it's also just the first couple of days that the chick hatched. So the area that they use for brooding can kind of morph as the chicks grow and they might kind of branch out. So maybe in a week or two, they'll start using their old brooding area outside this little cove. Uh, but usually when the chicks first hatch, they, they do tend to use the area kind of closest to the nest to brood their chicks. And it could change or it might, 
also be based off food availability and where they can find fish and whatnot. Because right now they seem to be diving around a bunch of rocks, so they seem to be finding food as of now, but that could change. So another diving question, um, when they dive for the fish, about how deep are they going, any idea? Uh, I think it just depends on on where in a lake they are, how deep that is, and how deep they have to go for fish. So. I think typically they're probably not diving 250 feet for a fish, especially around here. It's probably 15 feet deep around here that they're diving. So I think they just kind of dive however deep they need to to catch fish. Um, do they ever breed on the ocean? No. So the ocean is just uh, where they winter. They just spend their winter there and then they migrate up to these lakes and breed on the lakes for the summer. Somebody wants your job. How do you, how'd you get your job? How'd I get my job? <laughs> well, uh, I found the LPC through my research actually. And uh, so I had some connections with what I want to do with my research and loons. So this is kind of bringing them together. And I can kind of use the information I'm learning about their habitats to tie into my research. So, what is your research? Uh, my research has to do with malaria parasites in loons, so I can figure out kind of like the types of lakes that they're at, the mosquitoes nearby, um, yeah, stuff like that. So it's kind of relevant. Um, a lot of times you just kind of have to know someone. I had a connection here. I think that helped. Um, Experience. Could you review the sort of the rules about how far away to stay from a from a loon? Um, and I think there's number of questions are like if you're in a kayak, um, if you're in a motorboat and you're going fast, you really have to slow down for them. How, how far should you be away? Yeah, so loons are federally protected, so uh, like legally you need to stay 150 feet away from loons. So if you see a loon in the distance and you're in a boat or in a kayak, you shouldn't approach it. You should stay within 150 or er, outside of 150 feet. Uh, but it gets tricky when you're in a boat, I guess, because you're driving and loons just tend to pop up. So if you see a loon and you drive next to it, you should slow down because you're technically not supposed to have a wake when you're near any wildlife. That includes like geese and loons. Um, but yeah, the general rule is to stay 150 feet and basically try as best as you can. And try not to harass them or get too close, especially when they have chicks. Jane says she's seen them off the coast of Maine in, in, the, uh, in the ocean in the summertime. Is that, uh, it, I thought they have like a salt, a salt uh, filter that goes away in the summer. I mean, what, what, what would she be seeing there? Yeah, so um, the immature loons that are, so when the chicks hatch, they go to the ocean and then they'll stay in the ocean uh, for two to three years before they can start to breed and they come back to lakes. So she's probably seeing the younger loons that haven't started to breed yet and they kind of, they just hang out in the ocean for the first like three years of their life until they decide to come back to lakes to breed. And how long will they stay with the, uh, the, the parents here? Uh, here on the lake? Yeah. So uh, they stay, they stay until September, October maybe, uh, but the parents will go back to the ocean first and then the chicks will kind of hang out on the lake for a little bit and then um, they can stay here until it freezes over and until they still have enough room to fly back to the ocean. So they don't fly back to the ocean with their parents, uh, they do stay a little bit longer but they go a little bit after the parents do. Um, how long can they fly? How long can they fly? Like how far without landing? Yeah, well they, uh, they, they fly from like the Atlantic Ocean all the way up to like Montana, Wyoming. They can fly pretty far, like probably the span of the United States without landing. They're pretty okay. good migrators. Yeah. Okay, I think that's uh, that's the list of questions. Do you have any any last words? Um, I don't think so. The loons are doing well right now. They're hanging out right there with the chick on its back. The other one seems to be diving, so they're doing well. It's sad that this other chick or this other egg didn't hatch, but hopefully this one survives. And we'll keep you updated on the 
on how the chick does for the rest of the summer. And that's it. Okay, well, thank, thanks very much. I think the, uh, you have um, 70 people watching. So ah, cool. Hello. We'll be putting this on the, um, on the playlist in the uh, LPC YouTube channel. Oh, good. So people can watch. Great. Uh, watch that. <laughs> okay. Great. Well, th thanks, Alyssa, for your time. And thank you. And we're going to leave the camera running for a little bit to follow that loon. Okay. And then um, we'll... Uh, We'll be shutting it down probably within a half hour. Okay, so, sounds good. Much. Thank you.